the Joe Rogan experience? I mean, I've experienced intense stress from doing the thing I love the most, which is playing, playing concerts. You know what I mean? I've experienced it firsthand where it's like, and it, that's way different. When does it hit you? Like when? <laughs> Obviously, cause I'm not like <laughs> yeah. telling someone their fucking loved ones like about to fucking die. But uh, do you still feel it, man? It's all it, for me. It's all about just being in the right headspace. Hmm. You know, I mean, like when we first started playing, we would play these indie rock clubs. You know, because we we come from that background. Like, I guess what they would call now hipster shit or whatever. And that was just people who liked. You know, really passionate about certain types of music that wasn't massively appreciated. You know, which is still kind of what we're into. But because of that, most of the people that were coming to our shows were like the high fidelity type record store clerk. You know, you're playing a show and it's just like arms crossed. But and afterwards, like pretty good. You know, we'd be little, we'd be like 22, 22 year old kids, and the the, the 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 gatekeepers were like thirty. You know, thirty two year old. Now I would look at them as maybe being like. Uh, you know, the, uh, supportive, but at the time it was uh, more supportive. But at the time it felt more like judging. Mm. You know what I mean? So if I get in the wrong head state, set, headset, headspace, and I'm out on stage, I'm like, oh man, everyone's here to like judge, judge us or something. Mm. You know what I mean? Like if you're looking at this big crowd, but then I have, you know, I ultimately do. I ultimately tell myself, I was like, the worst band of all time has probably played to more, more. You know, like some terrible, like Menudo's played to more people. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like this isn't that many people. It's like like tonight we're playing the Wiltern. It's like there's like three thousand people. It's like let's be honest. Like the worst stand up comedian. Like I don't know or the, the I don't know, man. Like the, <laughs> like like the fifth Jonas brother could sell five thousand tickets in L A. Probably. So it's less stressful when you when I like or Gallagher too could probably sell three thousand fucking tickets in Los Angeles. Come on. That's how I look at it. You know, I'm like, oh, we deserve to be here more than that person. <laughs> We put our time in. <laughs> That's a hilarious way to look I, at it. I'm serious. Well, why would you concentrate on things that you think that suck? Does that alleviate anxiety? Does it actually re- work? No, I read this thing uh, that Captain Beefheart, one of our favorite musicians, said, and it was like, if you start, if you think about what you're doing, you've already lost the, <laughs> mm. the battle. And I, the, 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 the reality is that I don't need to think about, and I know Dan doesn't, we don't need to think about what we're doing. So because we're not thinking about what we're doing, like, the trick is to stay in the moment with the music, but I can play and not think about it, and then I start thinking like, "What's that person fucking thinking about out there?" You know what I mean? It's like I'm like, I got this other conversation happening here. I'm like, and it's an, an, like an intruder. Yeah, there's like, like it's, I like like temporary schizophrenia. Like, remember, like Pat, what if you just stop playing? You're like a devil and angel. Like, yeah, there's like, I actually remember thinking that on, on stage at Glastonbury. It was like, you know, there's like two hundred thousand people or close to that, and. Like, oh, if I just stopped playing, like, <laughs> what would happen? <laughs> and, so, and so I'm like, either ready, maybe don't do that. Don't do it. Just keep going. Yeah, he, he, yeah. <laughs> Pat Sorry had a, almost had a breakdown at, at Lollapalooza one new year. We both, it was intense for both of us, actually. Because yeah. you know what it was? I mean, you should tell a story. I mean, I just remember it from my point of view. I don't know. I don't know what was going on through your head at the moment. Five Red Bulls. <laughs> <laughs> He was getting into this thing where he would be really anxious and drink a lot of Red Bull. Oh, no. And so we got on stage, and it was like a sea of people. And he was on his fifth Red Bull, and his eyes were like saucers. And he was just (laughs) staring at me. (laughs) And uh, I had to, like, talk him off the ledge, right? Like, uh, I had to, like, put my foot up on the riser and kind of lean in and kind of talk in a voice calm voice hey man how you doing <laughs> you know what i mean i was just i was just exhausted really i'm you know like what, what do you want to do whatever you want to do is cool with me you know what just let me know he had to calm me down <laughs> how many red bulls does it take before it becomes speed I, I don't i don't drink that shit anymore but you know i, I think we also had been playing these shows and it was, it was exhausting and yeah most of it had to do with our our uh, schedule our mm. stress and it was in the middle of summer it was hot as hell and i i, I would think i was severely dehydrated uh-huh. but but i mean i was because we played this one show in des moines right around that time this, this was in 2010 right so this is this is when this happened was at Lollapalooza 2010 and this is a festival that we had played like um four times before so it wasn't like something new and we weren't even headlining this time it was just like we were on stage doing something i was actually looking forward to the show but this was like a pivotal moment for me. It was like, I, 
I just kind of missed the beat of a song, something that no one else even noticed other than probably Dan. And then I was like, oh, shit. And I got like, I spun out. And then I just kept spinning out. You know what I mean? Like a, pan mm. like a panic attack on stage. And when you have like a panic attack, like, you know, you tend to get a panic attack doing the same thing you did before. So I, for a while, was having a pan like little mini panic attacks every time I was on stage. Mm. But I got through the set and everything was fine, but I was like, fuck. And a part of it was that I looked out and there were like 50,000 people. We've been playing this festival f four or five times before and to like crowds starting at maybe 5,000 people. And now here we are, the way most of the festival was watching a, us play. And it was like, oh shit, like what the fuck's happening? Finally people were here and I was like, I can't fuck it up now. <laughs> And then like boom, <laughs> but you know I, I went to go see, I went to go see this dude here uh, in uh, in L A in Santa Monica named Kerry Gaynor who like he specializes in like <laughs> he's a hypnotist. I mean, look, man, I didn't know what wait to a, do. Wait a second, dude, this what? gets so good, man. <laughs> Keep going, dude. dude. I didn't know what to do because I didn't like a couple friends are like, man, just get some beta blockers, get some. <laughs> Get some uh, Valium, drink some beer. I like. I can't do any of that shit before I go on. I, I can't be relying on that before I play. So I was like, I, I got a recommendation to go see this hypnotist who f specializes in like quitting smoking and fear of flying and also stage fright. There's a lot of like actors who are going to do like plays for the first time. So I went to go see Carrie <clears throat> at his house and uh, we were playing some shows at the Palladium. And he, he did this thing, hypnotized me. And the second night, like I, I went that the first night we played, it was like better. The second night we played, it was like pretty much gone. And then I woke up in the hallway of the Roosevelt Hotel <laughs> in the stairwell in my underwear at like seven in the morning. And I'm literally in the, in the, in, I'm in the staircase in my underwear at seven in the morning. And I, I'm like, what the fuck? And I just remembered like this number, like seven oh eight. I think it was, it was like seven oh eight. Because I'd only been to the room one, like two two times. I never. I, and my girlfriend at the time was in there, luckily. And I went and knocked on the door. She's like, "What the fuck? Where the fuck were you going?" I was like, "I just don't know." <laughs> Hypnotism. It's real. Jeez. Have you ever been hypnotized? <laughs> yes. Yes. Did it work? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's a guy who was on yesterday. Actually, his name's Vinny Shorman. He hypnotizes a lot of fighters. Okay. And uh, he ties uh, his fighters. Yeah, he gets them into this. It's really interesting. Like I, I've I'd never had it before, and I wanted to try it. I was like, okay, I, I had these thoughts that it was probably bullshit, or it's for people who have weak minds. But it's a state that they can talk you into, and someone who's really good, like Vinny, can talk you into this state, mm -hmm. and then you're totally conscious, but you're definitely, you're definitely in this weird tunnel where you feel safe. Like mentally safe. It works. And you can talk and think about things in a way that's almost free of normal, regular anxiety. You can, you can address the anxiety. You can see it. But it's for the brief amount of time while you're really in that state, you, you can get rid of all that shit. This, huh. this dude. Very th weird. This guy, um, Carrie, I remember a couple of things specifically that he said. And I went, th so the, he said, like, you know, you're, you know you're, you're afraid of messing up. Like that's the whole point of like yeah. being in a rock band is like it's okay to mess up. It's not supposed to be perfect. You know what I mean? Perfection isn't something that anybody even wants. You know what I mean? Like if you go to like an art gallery and you see like a Thomas Kincaid painting, no one wants that shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he, and he was like he was telling me all that. He was he was telling me this shit. Like he was like basically like you know your personality is you know everyone's flawed we're human beings it's okay like yeah whatever like you're not supposed to be perfect you're, you have no desire to be the you know there's no co drumming competition you've entered you know what i mean and it was like i came out of it like yeah fuck it like i'm supposed to just be here having fun and i it worked <laughs>